Now let us understand the second source of Islam, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, the Prophet. How do we approach his personality and how do we learn from Muhammad? And what are the objections which are raised against him? And what are the objections that Muslims have of non-Muslims criticizing Muhammad? We take examples where a historic figure who would have slaves, who had illegitimate children, who uh, supported um, slavery, had sex with uh, slaves. Um, how do we take a person like that as a leader, as a, as a guide? But we do. Thomas Jefferson, who penned the Declaration of Independence, had slaves, had illegitimate children, did support slavery. But he wrote the Declaration of Independence, which says all men are equal. We take him for that. We take that value from him. And we see the limitations of his, not as reflective on the principle which he was conveying. All men are equal. That is correct. Muhammad, on the other hand, did not do these things. He, he was uh, very much in re releasing slaves, being kind to slaves. He treated women as equal in a society where women were treated like cattle. Um, he would take advice from his wives. Um, we have many examples there. How would somebody take advice from a wife? We have a hadith that says, the, according to the Prophet, women have half brains. Do they? Why would the Prophet say that and then take advice from a woman? Of course something is wrong here. The hadith is wrong. That is not true. So we have to understand a lot of the hadith were generated for caliphs to establish their rule over people, for the clergy to control the faithful, to tell them how to control their lives, and, of course, for men to control women. These are all control mechanisms. So a lot of hadiths were fabricated, were generated to support these control mechanisms. They were not true. Are they true hadiths? I don't, of course they are. But we have to make that distinction. And the distinction has to be based on something very critical. That the source is the Quran. If there is a hadith that doesn't agree with the Quran, we must reject it. We must consider it faulty. And that is what the compilers of hadith actually did. They had categorizations. They did not consider all hadith as valid. And they also classified some as weak and suspect. And we must adhere to that. Now, the story of Muhammad is basically somebody who grew up in a desert, in a tribal area, and he saw inequality. He saw mistreatment of women, he saw mistreatment of orphans, he saw mistreatment of slaves, and he spoke against that. That is why the establishment became against him. He was actually talking about equality, he was talking about emancipation, he was talking about, look, he worked for a woman 1400 years ago. This was far earlier, far than, than any liberation of women. He would take advice from his wives on many occasions. Why would he do that? This is somebody, he never beat his wives. This was a time when beating wives was wrong, but he never did that. So we have to learn from Muhammad in that sense. But here's where Muslims also have to understand something. Something that Muhammad was very clear to tell to his people, that he was human. The story of the dates is very important here. He saw people pollinating on the treetops, uh, pollen, uh, the, 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 date, the dates, and uh, he asked them, why are you doing this? And they saw this as some divine intervention, some insight from God, and they stopped doing it. And he said, no, this is just my opinion, and you don't have to follow my opinion. If I tell you something is coming from God, that is sacrosanct. It's a very important distinction. And early Muslims understood that very well. When Muhammad um, told where the troops should be stationed in preparation for the Battle of Badr, one of his companions walked up to him and said, is this information, this knowledge of yours coming from Allah or is this coming from you? And Muhammad quickly understood that and he said, no, it's my opinion, but tell me what's on your mind. And the companion suggested that another position for the troops he suggested that we should capture the water wells so that the advancing Meccan army would not have access to water before the battle and that will deplete their resources and uh, be favorable in, for, the, for the Muslims. Muhammad immediately agreed. 
On many occasions, Muhammad would sit with his companions and ask for their opinions. Why would he ask for opinions? Many of the things in, in Islam are coming from companions suggesting the adhan, even though the format that we pray was told by others, and he accepted them. These are not sacrosanct. These are not things that came from divine knowledge. These were after consultation, looking to the facts of the matter, of the time, the environment they were living in, the resources they were dealing with. How do you clean, cleanse yourself when you don't have soap? These were things that we have to understand and put into context when we study the life and teachings of Muhammad. Who is this Mullah of today who fills me with guilt, who drains me of confidence, who robs me of pleasure, who sends me to death? I have a brain to think. I have a heart for compassion. I have the book to read. I have science to explore. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no woman or man unequal. There is no human without dignity. I am no longer guilty. I am confident and proud. My faith is honesty. My creed is justice. My goal is equality. I am a free Muslim of today. Are you?